The first concept we need is that of basis, and the idea that a single vector can have multiple representations depending on its basis. So let's take the vector 1, 2, 3, and write it as a linear combination of the basis vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Now to make this equality hold, we're going to need to weight the basis vectors by numbers c1, c2, and c3. And by inspection, you can probably see that the numbers c1 through c3 are going to equal 1, 2, and 3, respectively. So the representation of the vector 1, 2, 3 in what's called the standard basis is identical to itself. This is because when we write a vector, we're tacitly assuming the standard basis. We can come up with a different basis, for instance, 1, 2, 0, and 0, 0, 3. And now the coordinate representation of the vector 1, 2, 3 is, as you can probably see, given by the numbers x1 equals 1 and x2 equals 1. So in this particular basis, the representation of 1, 2, 3 is given by the vector 1, 1. This is relevant to PCA because PCA finds basis vectors called principal components and represents every item in our data as a linear combination of the principal components. Before discussing why the principal components and the representation of the data in the principal component basis might be preferable, let's cover a few more notational issues. So the first thing we're going to do is rewrite our original linear combination in matrix notation. In matrix notation, we gather our basis vectors as column vectors into a single matrix, and we gather the coordinate numbers into a column vector. We define a matrix times a vector as the above linear combination. Finally, we can write the same matrix equation using variables if we call 1, 2, 3, V in our matrix B, and our coordinate numbers C, then we have V equals B times C. Note that when a vector is represented by a variable, we assume the vector is a column vector. If we mean a row vector, we must write V transpose. Two more final points. Let's again start with the vector 1, 2, 3, and this time choose arbitrary basis vectors. We can see that finding the numbers C1 through Cn in an arbitrary basis is not as straightforward as with the standard basis, and in general, the numbers C1 through Cn might not even exist. However, for certain sets of basis vectors, there is an inverse basis, or an inverse matrix, such that the numbers C can be directly computed by multiplying V by the inverse basis. So in other words, when we see a vector being multiplied by an inverse basis, the outcome will be the coordinate representation of v in the original basis. Finally, let's consider the case where our linear combination, the basis vectors, are one-dimensional. If we write such a linear combination in matrix notation, our matrix ends up being a single row. So to write this using variables, we must use the transpose operator to indicate that the matrix is a single row and so then we end up with the notation B transpose C. Note that B transpose C is identical to element-wise multiplication and then summing, which we can write also using summation notation, and B transpose C is also commonly called the dot product or the inner product. In the next video, we'll see why the principal component basis is possibly a better basis for our data set.